Welcome back to the channel. Well, in this workshop, what we're going to be doing is optimizing this Ioptron 150 Moxitove. If you watched the previous video on the review of the Ioptron, you'll be more familiar with this scope and what it has to offer and the ins and outs of it. So what I'll be doing in this workshop is showing you how to optimize it for maximum contrast and for an upgraded dovetail. Now the one it comes with seems to be adequate. I was able to bring it into balance, but this one is a little bit longer. That'll give me a little more leeway going forward and going back. I had considered putting rings on it, but to be honest with you, with the size of this OTA, it's really not that big. It's only a 150. I think having a dovetail underneath it is adequate. The other thing is the dovetail it comes with has two screws, one about here and one about here. And I'll be putting three on this one, one on each end and one in the middle. So that will be a nice secure fit. Now, in order to make this work, this is a solid bar dovetail. And typically what would happen is it would just be riding on just this center spot right in here. And it would tend to uh, rock like that because it's not straddling it. The ones they come with, usually when they do that, they're sort of scooped out so that there's two lines like you see here that ride on each side of it. That eliminates the need for using blocks that you normally need when you're using a Los Mandy plate because of the wider surface area that it's covering. Okay, because this is solid, as you could see here, and it's also grooved in the middle, which means that you really can't groove this out in the center because you'll be losing this slot here. It would remove it and then there'd be no way to secure it. So what I did was I ran two grooves on each side of it, or two dados, and on a table saw with a carbide blade, cutting a little bit as a, at a time. And then I had these maple beads here, and they just fit right in there, nice and snug. And drop that in there. And now you have a ridge underneath here. See, and this will allow this dovetail to straddle the circumference of the OTA. And this is not going to be sliding off because it's in the groove. Plus, it'll be pressure fitted against the side of the OTA. You know, every situation is a little different. But because I'm going to be flocking this, I figured, hey, why not remove the dovetail and upgrade it while we're at it? This is the material I've got. And I've got it from Scope Stuff. And it really does a nice job of keeping that light from scattering around. So here's the OTA without the flocking. You look on the side there, you could see reflective light bouncing on the side walls and I'm moving it around and you could see how it's... Look at that. Okay, now this is typical of these mocks or even Schmidt Cassegrains or even Newtonians as far as it goes. Unless they're kind of like a RC scope where they have the baffles built into it, that works really well. But these are typically smooth bore. We have light coming off the primary mirror that is reflecting directly onto the side. And normally you wouldn't have this much daylight or light entering the OTA. But you do get this kind of light scatter on brighter objects. Of course, not to this degree. I want to be clear about that. So you could use this and many guys do use these scopes just as they are. This step that I'm about to do flocking the interior will have probably an increase of contrast anywhere from 15 to 30 percent. So that's why we're undertaking this task. It's not absolutely necessary. I want to stress that. But if you're looking to eke out the maximum amount of contrast out of this or any other OTA that is similarly designed with a flat finish on the inside, flocking it 
will definitely add a bit more contrast to the view or image. All right, so the first step you want to do is mark where your primary mirror and your secondary mirror or corrector lens is located on the OTA. Not a big deal. This is pretty straightforward. You just take some painter's tape, put it on there like that. There are some other YouTube videos that kind of show this process. So this is not unknown territory. It's been done. The first thing you want to do though, you want to put, lock it into your mount because that's how you need to be able to work this. This is on a Sky T2. I've done a review here on Dakota Starry Nights on this. So we've got this here and now what we'll do is mark it B for back or anything you like and F for front. And if you want, take a straight edge of some kind and put a line if you feel like, you know, you want to really get a third point and that's that there. So we're going to take a razor or a utility knife or razor blade and right between the two points where the OTA is and the corrector plate is or meniscus lens, we're going to cut that tape. This really is not that complicated. Basically, just take your time. Be methodical and think it through. Make sure you have everything you need on hand before you start doing this. Okay, so the first step would be to undo the screws in the front of the corrector. And it's good to have a little container to kind of keep all these screws in one place. They're the same whether they're back or front, at least in this case, so it doesn't really matter. Take a nice firm grip. And it's also a good idea to tip it up a little bit like that. If it happens to come loose, it's not going to drop down. It's going to stay inside the OTA. So on this one, it's got one, two, three, four screws. That's it. Now I have an area off to the side that's prepared, ready to receive these. And we're just going to bring it over there once we get it off. Get this put over here while holding on to that. Make sure you got your cover on the front here. And now we want to pull this straight out. No big deal. Being careful because you've got that secondary there. You don't want to ding that coming out. And there it is. Pretty straightforward. And we're going to bring this over to a place I have ready. So I have it on a nice clean surface and then I've got these bags I'm going to cover it up with in order to prevent any dust from dropping on top of it. Okay, so now that that's out. Now here you've got, to, um, you've got two sets of screws. You want to remove the ones that are here on the white part, on the OTA, not the back ones that supports the mirror. And that would not be good. So let's take care of that. When I lay this down, I want it straight up and down because inside you have a primary mirror baffle tube and we don't want to be laying it on that, okay? Like laying it on the side and then the primary mirror baffle tube is like this. You want this up like that to keep that tube perpendicular to the ground. Don't forget, it's the ones on the white, if not the ones back here. Now we want to come straight out. You have to be more careful here because you got that tube hanging out and you don't want to bang that. So just come straight out. Just kind of walk it up, back, back, back. And it should there, free. Okay. And it has a date when it was built. It looks like 2022, 412. Pretty nice. Now the other thing, guys, when you have this mirror, and if you're having a conversation with somebody, do not talk into the mirror. Put it away from you because as you talk, you might have little droplets of saliva that might come out and you don't want them spotting the mirror. So always keep this away from you whenever you are handling this. So here I have the primary mirror supported in between the walls of that little corrugated box. And I put a slit here on this paper. Now this is Tyvek. So they don't have any lint and that'll protect the mirror. Now that that's done, we'll go over to the OTA and start flocking it. Now that these two are secure and here's the other one. 
So now that's the meniscus lens of the mock covered over with the Tyvek bag. So inside the OTA we have two nuts and those two nuts attach to these two Allen head screws that are holding the dovetail. We're going to be removing that and actually adding another hole in the back so that we can have three screws clamping this new dovetail to the OTA. They recommend that you wipe the inside down with some alcohol to remove any you know, loose paint or what have you so the flocking sticks real good. This is especially true if you have an open OTA like a Newtonian and you're looking to reflect it because over time it is an open tube and stuff does get down on the sidewalls and it becomes even more imperative that you wipe it down with alcohol before you apply your flocking material. So I've measured the meniscus lens or the front of the OTA and it goes inside just a little bit under three quarters. So we're going to scribe a line at three quarters so our flocking material doesn't interfere with the coupling of the meniscus lens and the OTA. And in the back it's just under half inch. And it's better to have, you know, like an eighth of an inch or something like that so that you don't interfere with that so you're not going to have any problem because once you put that flocking in, it'll be very difficult to cut it out evenly. So it's better to be a little bit short than a little bit too much. It's not going to have any really impact on the light dampening that this flocking material is going to do for us. There's several ways you can do it, but I'm using this combination square. You could also get a little block of wood that's a half inch thick on this side and three quarters on that side and accomplish the same thing. The easiest way to mark that is put the OTA perpendicular or straight up and down and then put your spacer right there like that and then your pencil and just go around like that. Again, this is metal to metal so you don't want to be pushing down on this combination square too awful hard because you don't want to scratch the paint up here. I've seen some guys try to mark it with the mirror still in place. I do not recommend that. You want to stay away from that mirror, guys. And when you go to put this flocking material, you don't want to cover the line. So the way I'm doing it, I'm just going back and forth. Uh, because if you just try to keep it one thing, it doesn't really show up. In other words, I'm just going like this, to, like that, you know, while it's underneath there, going like that back and forth as I slowly go around. Makes a pretty good line, definitely visible. And like I said, we want to see that line whenever we go to flock it. We don't want to cover that line. So now that I got that one, I'll adjust this to three quarter. And that'll put me right about there. And so now we'll just turn it around this way. This is why it's good to have it on a mount, so that you can position it wherever you need to be. So now we're down three quarter, and this would be for the front. And put it right on three quarter. And double check your marking, it says F for front. So we know that we're three quarters for the front, so now we're good. Put that in there like that. And start going back and forth. Another alternative would be to get three quarter inch wide painter's tape for the three quarter. I believe this is, that looks about an inch or something like that in three quarter. And wrap it in there. Whatever works. All right. And that takes care of that. We obviously have a line here, so we know where to start. But where's the center? So take the steel square and lay it up against the two nuts that protrude through the OTA. Okay, that's securing the Vixen dovetail plate. And now that will give you a straight line. So then you just draw this here like this. And I can see a nice straight line there. So I can start it from there. Because without that, you don't know if you're coming in on an angle. And if you don't get it right, then it's not going to end up right. So that's a great way to do it. Just get your framing square or a piece of straight steel and lean it up against that. And you'll have a good line to go by. I'm going to wipe that out. Yeah, see, see the dust from the pencil. So there you could see the line part of it towards the rear. 
and the two screws that guided the framing square to make sure that it was parallel to the length of the OTA. That's what we're looking for. So maybe you're thinking, yeah, well, that's great, but I don't have any nuts protruding inside my OTA to get the straight line. Not a problem. We have a solution for you here. Take your OTA. I just have a piece of round plastic here for the demonstration, but take your OTA. Make sure it's secure, that it's not going to roll left or right. Grab a marble or a BB, and it'll continue to rock till it finds the bottom, and that is where you would mark it, and you'd do the same thing to the other end. The main thing is to get it level along the length of the OTA so that the BB doesn't roll down one end or down the other end, that it stays relative to where you dropped it. The rear of the OTA, the recess is a half inch, and the front, the recess, is three quarter. Okay, so that's one and a quarter inch total. So, to get the length of our flocking material, Okay, so it's 16 and 7 eighths minus an inch and a quarter would be 15 and 3 eighths. So that's what we're going to cut this at 15 and 3 eighths and slip it in there and see how much it covers. It's 12 inches wide. It's the way it came. It's going to have to go in two pieces. They recommend that you do it in two pieces because if you try to make it in one piece, you're going to have a mess in there and it's very difficult. So I'm using a carpenter's framing square and making sure I get a kind of a square cut here. I also have it on a cutting board that's wide enough to accommodate it. Okay, 15 and 3 eighths. Boy, I can already see the, how the light's been dampened. So I'm going to cut another one now that I'm in the groove of cutting. This flocking material that Scope Stuff sells, they're out of Texas, is pretty good stuff. Not all flocking material is the same, and I would recommend that you take a good hard look at their flocking material before you try to buy it someplace else. I'm not affiliated with them. Their flocking material is of the type that's been used by NASA because it doesn't uh, shed and it doesn't delaminate and lots of good things. It's a fair price for what it is and if you go to a hobby store and get what they got laying around, oh, you might run into trouble later on because, you know, with the heat of the OTA or the cold temperatures and the flocking material starts to disintegrate on you. And so look, I'll tell you what, I would highly recommend you get this stuff because this stuff is made for this kind of work. The first sheet, this edge here, I'll put alongside that and then start peeling it back and rolling it around. This is kind of like laying for mica. Get one shot at it, and that's it. That line really helps. Heck yeah. Because otherwise, if you don't get that right, you're like this or like that, you need to be parallel so that you come up around and evenly so that this edge here, because it's in relationship to this edge, so that this edge here maintains that half-inch spacing here. Otherwise, it's going to start to creep over and come in here or creep away depending on how you orientate it. Expose about a half inch of that to help us get it started without having to fight, you know, the paper. Yeah, see, just like that. Hope you can see this. Just, just taking a half inch off. Okay. This is, this is the tricky part, right? Okay, so now I got a half inch taken off, just like that. Kind of rough. So I just fold it in like that, bring it around. Holding it on the two ends, getting the space here on my half inch space, and then bringing it down to the line in the back. 
and got my half inch there and got my line in the inside and yeah press it in use the finger and just run it right along that half inch part that's exposed so now you can see how it's running parallel to that line and that line is parallel to the length of the OTA and then the spacing see that line right there the pencil mark so it's going to continue that way because we've orientated it correctly to the length of the OTA that's the trick guys that's the trick doing it that way and there's another way you can do it by looking inside the OTA and some of these are made with rolled steel and there'll be a seam running down the whole length of the OTA. So that's a great place to start your flocking material and align it with that seam so you'll get a nice parallel roll. Now that that's done, I'm going to peel this paper back. It's, you know, a little tedious, but kind of run your hand lightly. Make sure your hands are clean, that there's no oil on them. So I'm just rolling it making sure that we don't get no bubbles it's pretty nice material it and doesn't seem to be ready to tear on you looks good to me I'm gonna check it with the light and just kind of dark in there oh yeah that went in nice guys heck yeah that went in nice now before I really rub it down super hard, I'm going to put on some gloves. And it followed our line perfectly. Okay, I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, going to press it down now because that's a keeper. Yeah, otherwise, if you don't wear gloves and you start pressing in, basically you're wiping the oil off your hand onto the flocking material. I've seen it, guys do it and, you know, they're not wearing gloves and hopefully they wash their hands real good. but it's best to have gloves on. We'll vacuum it out. Now the rest of it here we've got a little bit to go. So I've got the graded dovetail and that's the inside of the OTA right now and you can see I've got some bright screws in there and we're gonna cover them up with a little bit of flocking material That'll be the next step. Um, also have to put the finder bracket on there as well. The other thing is um, you're going to need to put some a little bit of this blue Loctite on these nuts. I went ahead and put them on the nuts that hold the Vixen dovetail. Because once you close this up, you don't want to be going back in there to tighten up loose screws. Now that's a project you want to do when you got plenty of time. It's nice if it's a funky day out there like it is today because you're not thinking about being anywhere else because there's nowhere else to go and you can just concentrate on the job. So to cover up those shiny nuts that are in there I'm using the flocking material cutting it at an inch and a half by an inch and a half square and getting it centered over the nut and pressing it down firmly. Pretty simple. It's better than paint because it's not going to flake and that's stainless steel so it's kind of tricky getting paint to stick to that stuff. So, so there's a one flocking material that I've got on top of a nut. You can see the other one that still needs to go and the one here in front's already been done does a nice job. Okay. And now we'll get our meniscus lens and put it in. That's enough. And now we'll just line it up with our marks. Give it a little look. Looks good to me. That's it. Guys, this really isn't that big of a deal. 
it's just keeping some things in mind like cleanliness and taking your time. If you take anything away from this video, it's using a straight edge against your nuts that are on the inside of the OTA and drawing a line so you can get a nice perpendicular line that way so when you go to start it out, you're going to be right on. Okay, so now we're going to get the primary mirror. I saw a little bit of dust on the focusing plate. This focuser is attached to a metal plate that attaches to the mirror. And there was a little bit of dust on there. Okay, here we go. Right in there. There. It's a pretty short screw and you know it's kind of hard getting it started with your fingers. There's not much to grab onto. It actually guys to tell you the truth it wouldn't have hurt to have put it in a perpendicular position. Okay. And then lock it down. That would have been a better way of putting that on there. That way it wouldn't flop out. So when you do yours that's a better position. Take the cover off. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, it is like, it's like looking in the space. It's dead black. There's nothing shining. I'm not getting any of this ambient light in here bouncing around on the sidewalls. Holy cow. Yeah. So, you can see it's just dead black. I mean, nothing. It looks like space. And then you got the mirror in the back, obviously, but the side walls, absolutely dead black. This is going to make a difference. It was worth it. 20 bucks and a little bit of my time. Yeah. Even if you weren't going to upgrade the Vixen dovetail, just doing this is going to really increase your contrast. Excellent. Love it. So here I got a sub-second exposure on the moon and we're not getting any reflections inside the OTA. The moon is a very bright target and usually you can kind of see some hazing uh, more or less around the object or in the dark areas of the view. But here we've got a nice Apo-like crisp clean view. All right. Well, fellas, that'll do it for this workshop. And if you're thinking of flocking one, I believe this ought to help you out. I'm going to collimate this. I don't think it'll be off that much because of the simple fact that we used the tape and we just went back in. Okay, thanks for tuning in to the channel. And until next time, clear skies. And hey, y'all stay safe. It's a crazy world out there from time to time. <laughs> All right, take care.